Welcome to the Digital Journey Podcast. Every successful online business entrepreneur has an incredible story to share about their journey to success. Listen and learn from top digital mavericks and online business insiders as they share their secrets so you can live the lifestyle you deserve. Your pilots for today's journey, Rob Fortney and Nick Nimmin. Welcome aboard, passengers. The digital journey begins now. Hi, welcome to the Digital Journey Podcast, navigating your online business voyage. I'm Rob Fortney from the Amazon Gorillas and my six-shooter friend, Nick Nimmin, how are you? I'm doing fantastic. You know, we're always beating the horse to death about uh, how awesome Chiang Mai is. And I just want to say that this time of the year that we are approaching right now, I mean, it is fantastic here. The, the, the weather, this is just a great reminder of how awesome it is here. And I'm just so happy. I can't even hardly stand it. Me too. Just imagine a spring day, ah. like where it's the first time it's super beautiful and there's no heat and it's just cool and nice. So if this is your first time listening, welcome to the podcast And if you're returning, hey, it's nice to see you again. The Digital Journey podcast is produced every week for your enjoyment and inspiration. And feel free to add the podcast to your favorite RSS feed so you don't miss any info nuggets that may be a game changer for you and your digital business. And if you want to see the video version of this podcast, go to our website, digitaljourneypodcast.com. So our big guest for today's show is Igor Bysich. I got that right. He's from Sylvania. And his business that he's involved in, Eager runs a SEO client agency for the last five years in Sylvania. How are you doing? I'm doing fine, thanks. Well, welcome glad, to the podcast. Glad to be here. All right, so what we're going to find out today is we're going to catch up with him. He's going to share some of the things that he does in his daily business, how he got started. And needless to say, you are one of the only biggest, only <laughs> SEO guys inside of Sylvania. So you dominate the market. And before we get into that, I want to let you know that the Digital Journey podcast is brought to you by our friends at EmpireFlippers.com. Empire Flippers is the number one curated marketplace for buying and selling established, profitable online businesses. Visit their website at EmpireFlippers.com and see what businesses are for sale. And if you already own a business, there's a great place to evaluate your website for free so you can get an idea of how much your website is worth. With that out of the way, let's get this journey started. How are you doing today? Well, doing fine. Glad to be here. We're glad to have you here. So I guess before we get started, one of the main things is, is let's just get a little bit of backstory about you, where you come from, how you got here, just the basics. Yeah, so I'm Igor. I'm from Ljubljana, Slovenia. That's the capital. Uh, been doing, I'm 34, going to be 35 in a few weeks. Okay. Uh, Congratulations on making it 35 years. Yeah. Yeah. Going strong. <laughs> it's all downhill to 70 from here, <laughs> supposedly. Uh, I'm sort of a senior citizen in the SEO industry. I've, I just found out that when, when I came to Chiang Mai, I thought eh, everybody was like 30, 35, but I keep meeting like nine, 19 year olds, like 21, 23, everybody, every, they look 30 or 35, they go, no, I'm 25. But I've been doing this, uh, like the internet marketing thing for about 10 years. I think I started late 2007. Like I had one of those four hour work week moments I read The 4-Hour Worker by Tim Ferriss, and that sort of, I was in college back then. So that sort of got me, maybe I should start my own business. I started something completely different. I didn't go into like SEO or PPC stuff immediately. Uh, my first business was actually, I founded my, um, uh, my own brand of martial arts gear. I went to Alibaba, found a supplier. I was doing martial arts before, uh-huh. like two, three, four times a week. I was like really into it. So there were no suppliers. There were no real suppliers. There was only like one guy reselling stuff. So I said, I'll do my, I'll make my own brand. I know what needs, I know what we need. So I was like in a, in a giant club, like 500 people were in our sports club. So oh, wow. that was like, okay, that's a good start. Yeah. So I just reached out to some Pakistani where they make like 95% of the stuff. Uh, companies got some samples. Let's do it. I was like, 24 yeah 24 at the time so i started that it was like e-commerce based but also direct sales so that was the first time i ever like made a website like my brother made the creepiest website ever in html (laughs) Uh, if i would see it now i would not be proud i wasn't proud of it back then (laughs) so but there were like no funds for like a real proper web design but it got the job done it got the job done i i had my like my my own warehouse i had like three to five tons of cotton in it because you have to like fill the punching bags up and that was like manual labor. Oh. So I did that for like two and a half years. 
but in the meantime i also i just i had to do adwords like to promote but back then like clicks were like one cent one cent a pop for punching bags i literally spent in the entire time of the business i spent i think 120 bucks on adwords to sell like tens of thousands of euros of punching bags so that was a good roi back then absolutely but and then people like adwords was new back then in like in slovenia people didn't know what google you can buy google it's like yeah you can buy or you can go like the organic route so i had friends coming up to me said do this for us they had businesses they had like a gardener like a pizza place that delivers etc and sooner or later i got like 20 clients purely referral based like paying me to do adwords for them i was the martial arts three ton cotton guy with a (laughs) warehouse and now suddenly i'm a computer guy because i study economics i didn't i had no computer background whatsoever instead of just like playing video games that was it that's the only computer i have ever seen so so yeah that, then there was like a breaking point first i finished college i i finished i dropped out of college but i finished it like last year so that's good yeah <laughs> um so so you dropped out of college and then you ended up going back i so ended up going back like last year okay 12 years like 10 years later i said i i had to finish this no reason i don't need sure, it just a personal but just sure, a personal thing i would like to get out of the way and then i was at the breaking point because if you have a company if you're a student back home in slovenia like all the taxes everything is much lower than if you, you are like really employed etc so that was one of the issues so there was a, like a hun- couple of hundred bucks per month at least hmm. i was like okay plus the supplier got really uh, worse like all all my stuff was black like Ford, when he's, you can have any other, any color you want, as long as it's black. <laughs> Everything was black, red stitching, red labels, that was it. Nice. Red punching bags, punching gloves, geese, belts, shin pads, you name it. And they started like, I ordered like a, a couple of thousand products and they didn't come black and red, they came black and pink. Oh, wow. And I was like, it took them like six months to produce it, to ship it over. Even though they came by plane, not by boat, it still took them a long while. At first, it was like two months. Everything was here, and then it was like three months, four months. I, but switching suppliers was like real difficult. Oh, I bet that's stuff that you have to deal with in the Amazon FBA space, isn't it, Rob? <clears throat> well, what you experienced is kind of typical a lot of times. Yep. They'll uh, they'll start out like gangbusters. I call them shooting stars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then your whole business. Yeah, you know, I always start out now with having at least two to three suppliers that I set up up front that I know can copy and do what I need to do. So, and then sometimes I'll swap them back and forth just so that can't happen. So if A does it, B's, you know, right behind them. But but that was back, I mean, you're still talking 10 years ago, right? I mean, yeah, this is still like eight, nine years ago. And so I was doing the AdWords thing. I, I didn't have any bills. I was still living at home. so. Now, life was good back then. So I was like, okay, my student year is coming to an end. This guy is not reliable. So what are we going to do? So I, it was a, like a, I don't know how he even got to my first like product, how to make money online. It was a, I, I know exactly what it was called. It was called Tycoon Cash Flow or something. Typhoon Cash Flow, something really sketchy, like for a for a dollar. It was about Amazon affiliates. But that's the first time I got in touch with SEO. I was like, oh, SEO. So there is a way you can rank without actually paying them. Sure. You know, and I, I think that's something that that a lot of people, um, you know, that are already familiar with this kind of stuff, take for granted. Like we assume that everybody knows what SEO is. We assume that everybody knows that you can get traffic organically and things like that. So it's it's interesting hearing that that it was like a discovery. You know what I mean? Like, oh wait a minute, I can I can I can get traffic organically. This is crazy. I, I know how much I don't know about SEO now. <laughs> After that conference, <laughs> yeah, went to the conference yesterday and it was about a whole day and like ninety percent of it was just going. <laughs> but with a great thing about a. a uh, about an, an event where you bring 500 entrepreneurs together is there's 500 entrepreneurs together. Yeah. And so every break, the first problem was they had food everywhere. It was like every time you got out of this room, like it was like they filled the whole lobby with like snacks and food. You would not believe, like you missed it, Nick. It was a big day yesterday for sure. 
um, I probably gained five pounds just being there because I was like, well, I'll just stand out here and eat till the last minute and went in. But anyway, but to be able to meet people in an entrepreneurial setting like that was really uh, helpful. Yeah. So, so, so you're here for that conference. What? Let, let's accelerate the journey a little bit and, and, and get into what actually got you into the actual uh, SEO side of things and how you got started on, on, on that yeah, part of it. Yeah, that was really like a, it escalated quickly. I just followed the, uh, the, the teachings in the book. I was like, okay, let's make a website. Never made a website before in my life. I learned HTML pretty quick, like in Dreamweaver, I think yeah. we used it back then. Uh, so I made a website. It was like punchingbagworld.com, something like that. Put some content on it. I wrote it myself. I knew what I was talking about. Put some, okay, Amazon Associates program. Great. I'll, I can make money from it if somebody buys a punching bag, etc., etc. But that's literally not the first dollar I made. The first dollar I made was just like promoting a ClickBank product. Hmm. You know, ClickBank. Oh, yeah. Like information product via for Mafia Wars and Farm Will. That was a, like a game when Facebook came out. That was like the game millions of millions have played. And I was like spamming the hell out of it on Facebook. Like all the groups, please add me on Mafia Wars, please add me. And I was like every 10th guy was me. If you want to get faster results by etc. etc. And like, I don't know, eight people bought it. I got $28 commission. And it was the first time I actually saw like zero, 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 28 bucks. And when I got the check for like two hundred fifty six dollars, I believe I was like, oh, yeah, that's nice. one of the things that we talk about a lot. We talked about it yesterday at the conference. And one of the great things, it's like it's the day when you're a marketer. So if yeah. you're out there getting started and you're thinking about doing this, if you really want to just a, a small victory in your life that will feel like you won the lottery is to get that first dollar in your account. Yeah, look at that. Uh, not, not just on the screen, but actually in your yeah, hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it we don't have checks. Uh, yeah. you American, uh, Americans have checks, and I was like, oh my God, a check. I think, I think I didn't get anything out of it because it was like the process of check. What do I do? How do I check it? What do yeah, I do? Yeah, that was like so many fees. I think I ended up with 100 bucks, but still, yeah. I had, okay, we can do this. So we mainly, we started doing AdSense sites. AdSense sites were really popular back then, like 209. Um, 208, the end of 208, uh, like AdSense site, you just made little dinky sites about you found a keyword, easy to rank for, like million dollar, um, the million dollar game or whatever, the, the millionaire show, oh, okay. the millionaire show online game.com, etc. You didn't promote anything. You just, okay, a hundred thousand people are looking for it. Let's make a dinky site, five pages of content, like maybe three links and you were ranking back then you could do it. So. We, we just found the easy keywords, ranked for them, put AdSense on it, like Google Ads, three banners, people would click on it, that was it. And when we found like a goldmine keyword, we actually ranked for a one in a 1.5 million exact keyword, which is like a lot, 1.5 million people search for it a yeah. month, and we were ranking number three. Hmm. So we got like 5,000, 10,000 people per day coming nice. to the sites. and crazy CTRs, like people were clicking because they couldn't, the point was, it doesn't exist or they can't find the information. It was a sketchy business. So we just scaled that up to like 500 domains. We had like 500 domains, but we did, we still didn't know what we were doing. We know, okay, this works, let's this do it. This works, let's replicate. Yeah, on one hosting account, we had analytics, so we knew how much, which all the basics you don't do, like all the 500 sites were on the same AdSense account our own names, no who is protection, nothing. So we thought that would last. We were making like five figures passively without doing jack. Bleep. Right. Yeah. So that that lasted for like a year, year and a half. It it was escalating, but then like November came, November twenty first, two thousand eleven, remember it well. My birthday. I got a I got a gift from Google. Welcome mm. to the morning. Uh, yeah. You make nothing now. No, no, it wasn't the morning. It was actually the late evening when I was returning home from the from my party, like my birthday party. I was like, oh, yeah. No, I was just like, man, what a great day. I right? was just You're like, thinking, wow, could this like every night better? I was just like checking how much did we make today? And I was like half blurry. <laughs> it was like, your account has been disabled. Mm. And then I checked, I like, oh my, because on the 23rd, they usually pay out AdSense. So not only did we didn't get the previous months, we also didn't get the current months. So it was like, ouch. Right. And you're spending at that point when it's coming in, you're spending it like it's coming. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're just spending we're, it as you go, and then that next have, month, like, all of a sudden you're screwed because you've been spending it like it was going to keep coming forever. Yep, sort of like that. We we had no we had no business sense whatsoever in order like to okay let's the the only investments we made were let's make more of them let's make let's buy us 200 sites and actually like 380 sites got hit that day Ouch. the index gone we milked the, that keyword we, we still milked it for about i don't know three to four years but in real like 10 percent of what we were making before sure so the partner i had at the time uh he said I'm done. I ain't doing this. This is too much of a roller coaster ride. So I'm not doing it. And I said, there has to be a like legit way of doing this shit. So sorry. No, no you're okay. okay. You're okay. We're, we're, we're on a podcast. podcast. We can uh, talk about it. Yeah, we're not. Okay. Yeah, we're not worried about being family friendly here. It's okay. okay. Uh, so I just I don't know how I started exactly, but I sort of picked up a few. They were not books because there are no books on SEO. But I started. Um, following like um not i don't think diggity was like actually a thing back then but like the the popular forums warrior forum was really big back then yeah it's still big now but it's I, different I, it's different, it's different than it was back then yeah. yeah make a thousand dollars a day right or f- make three thousand dollars it's just a bunch of no. people a bunch of internet marketers spamming each other basically they were like actual yeah. threads like <laughs> it a, is that's what it is now <laughs> like a hundred page thread on I think I think X Factor or something was his name. Like he was the guy. He was making like six figures per month, and everything was like, oh, let's bow to him. So I followed that, and I started testing like on real proper domains. Again with affiliate, I I did some more AdSense, but the CTRs were so low that you needed like tens of thousands per day just to make a couple of hundred bucks per month. But then I tried this for like two years maybe still I still had some income coming in still living at home I didn't have like any high-flying plans but then my girlfriend at the time she, we we're still together um, my girlfriend said why don't you just do it for Slovenians it must be a hundred times easier to rank here than it is, it is to rank in the States I hope like, you married her no I don't think we're getting married I'm just kidding we're still together it's a great idea Mm-hmm. And you think she's the greatest thing in the world? Yeah, yeah of course she best. is. Two days <laughs> coming home. <laughs> they miss me like crazy. Like this is the first time I ever been away. So, mm. Mm. and she said, "Why don't you do it? Why don't you just do it for Slovenia?" I was like, "Slovenians, how much do they pay? What, what's the SEO market?" And I was like, "Okay, let's check it out. What's the competition like?" I'm like, as soon as I saw the competition, like the top ten, I was like, oh, "I can rank you okay. today." Okay, we're doing this. We're doing this. Made aside, I had to think of a like a, a brand name, uh, SEO or something. Everybody was like the Slovenian version of SEO. I stuck with SEO, seopro.si. Sounds good. Available, buy it. I wrote, I literally wrote the, the content on the first day. Like it took me like 45 minutes to write like a thousand words, thousand words about SEO. On the first, I think it took me like two months to rank it top page boom got my first client there nice that my first client my first client was actually a lawyer yeah he was a lawyer um, you can actually PPC lawyers back home it's legal oh interesting they cannot they have like a I don't know how to say an agreement you can't like like alcohol lawyers and um, cigarettes. cigarettes yeah that's funny that lawyers are grouped with alcohol and no, no, cigarettes. They, they're not grouped that's as they should be right? yeah. <laughs> the dangerous thing in the world Attorneys, <laughs> alcohol, and cigarettes. Can we rank them below cigarettes? I think one of the interesting things that you talked about, and I think it's really important for our listeners, is that basically what you did was is what we talk about um, here on the show a lot, which is find that niche and then go dominate it. Like find yeah. that small piece that you can just go in and be the guy. And now you're the big guy in Sylvania. Right. Yeah, I mean, the, there are there's nobody a, else. <laughs> there are agencies, right? They do. They, they have SEO guys, or they have, they might have three SEO guys, but they're still not full in. They they do other stuff. They do web design. They do they get they get the clients through web design, and then they upsell. Oh, you need some SEO. You need some of this, some of that. I actually got like from the EU. We got like subsidized, or how do you say um, um, a grant? 
Um, no, in order to like um, escalate the uh, young entrepreneurs, okay. you get like uh, five thousand bucks to get started. Right. Okay. But you need like a plan where you're gonna do, etc. And I was like, I'm gonna do SEO. They're like, you're gonna do just SEO? How, how's that gonna work? Is that gonna pay the bills? I'm like, trust me, I'm gonna do. I have it planned out. This and this and this. This is how they do it in other countries, etc. So I got approved. I got that. Um, and then once the clients came in start coming in at first i started small like my first time i think the lawyer paid me like 200 euros per month and i thought that was great i know my profit margins they're good etc i know I, what i was doing i ranked him he had a brand new site as well oh really so that but we still like ranked him in top the top uh, spots and even my pbns and the problem was when i used my pbns you know what PBNs are. Yeah, we, we know what they are, but t just tell yeah, the audience because there's some, some guys out there that may not know. So explain what a PBN to them. Yeah, quickly. PBN literally is a page you own with authority. That's like an aged page. Like I have a 15 year old page that has some authority in Google. You put an article on it about lawyers. You put a link in it, lawyer in Ljubljana. It links to the page of the client and Google sees the authority here. There's an article about lawyers. So if this guy who's been around for 15 years uh, talking about lawyers and point and pointing to this guy like the new lawyer page let's boost him up a bit so the more authority you give them the higher they rank but nice. the problem was my pbns were ranking in the top 10 so my pbns that also you were outranking the lawyer so yeah what you're saying like okay i was outranking he wasn't even ranking but my pbns were ranking but the problem with my pbns back then was they were like random they were like for a for a lawyer for a uh, for anything sketchy like nice. uh, red shops. You know, I don't know how you call them like um, erotic shops, etc. So if anybody clicked on the article I had, they had like all these other options as well. <laughs> yeah, all these other options that makes absolutely no sense. Sure. No sense with my yeah. PBNs. Yeah, but I soon realized as soon as he got like three to four links, five links, he, he would outrank you. He'll be uh, he'll outrank us. Yeah, yeah, and it's like spiraled from there. I back then like I got like 10 15 clients I thought this is good the world is good I, I didn't even phantom going like maybe I should charge more I realized that in like a couple of years but when I moved out uh, I found okay I got now rent I got bills I got everything else to pay this ain't gonna work like this so we had to like ramp it up everybody was like if, if I found somebody in the industry or were like talking to some like from America or from England or forever no dude you need to raise your prices I'm like they're not accepting prices at that rate because like minimum wage in Slovenia is 600 bucks and like the average people with MBAs nowadays have like a thousand euro per month that's it so if you want to charge like 500 600 they're like dude we, we're just gonna hire somebody full-time eight sure, hours sure. a day we're gonna <laughs> see him right here I'm like yeah what does he know about did he study seo can you stop we actually have like digital marketing at college now like a four-year course you can actually get a degree from digital marketing that's nice. how far we've come so i tried it scaling up like every other every uh, inquiry we, we get it's like okay uh, what's your quote sort of i don't have like a system i just like okay these are the keywords this is a competition yeah 250. so you're just winging it just, throwing just winging numbers it. At them. 250 300 done like when I got those, I started like 150, 200, 250. And when I started like just putting it out there, we can, we can go down from there. 300 done, 350 done. And I was like, okay, maybe there is room. And I found out the higher it goes, the less nagging you'll get from them. Yeah. You know, that's, that's, that's universal. The case universal. Yeah, that's universal. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I remember being in the car business 30 years ago, 25 years ago, I guess. And you know, when you'd sell somebody to come in and they would just beat you to death on the price and, oh, yeah. you didn't miss this spot and you do this spot and you give them the best deal that anybody's got. Like you're selling the car, you don't make a dollar on the car or whatever. Then the guy that comes in who adds the add-on, the special gloss wax and the rims and whatever and pays like, he's the happiest guy in the world. You know, he spent all more than everything, but the guy who's beating you to death on price is the pain in the butt. That's exactly, that's so funny that yeah. it is universal. Yeah, that's why people, Everyone I talk to, especially here, like nine out of 10 people I talk to are affiliates. Ah, oh, clients, I don't want to do clients. They're a pain in the ass, they're yeah. a pain in the ass. I don't feel that way anymore. I used to feel it. I was like, 
I wanted to go back to something affiliate passive, not working with people. I don't have a problem working with people, but if they're a pain in the butt and they keep calling me like every day, what did you make today? Or did you make any links? Please show us the URLs. And the more you, the more you tell them about SEO, the worse. I, I could see that. Because they start getting confused, start yeah, thinking they, they know oh, what's no, going on. Yeah, they start. I have a friend. Uh, he told me you should buddy. do that. I'm like, oh, really? Yeah, I, I read something. I read something from like four years ago, right. and our pictures are not up to par. Why didn't you mention anything about that, et cetera, et cetera. So the higher I went, the less pain I had. I, I literally talk to my clients now once a month, tops. Maybe if there are any issues, but they're usually not. So, but I think like, as a sole proprietor, I think that's the word. Uh, we have it as well, like SP. I have people working for me, but all on a freelance basis, like content writers, content managers. As far as it goes, like in Slovenia, we've like capped it, unless we were like a big agency, because back back home, it's like this, oh, you have a nice agency, nice offices. How many people are working at you? They don't care about results. As I'm talking to the Americans here, they're all, yeah, they, they just want their phone to ring. Back home, it's how many people, I get that, like one in three meetings I have, how many people working for you? Where are your offices? Can we come? Like, they want to see the... The business side. The, they wanna, the business they side, the, yeah. The, the mask. If you're a 30-person agency, yeah. you are you can charge a thousand. Yeah, of course, they're, they're mm. a big agency, they can charge a thousand, but it's not uh, the ratio between the, uh, how do you say, the results and the, like, the business side of it doesn't, make any sense we actually had like clients who just want to outrank a specific person <laughs> like oh this is my brother we split up we have our own businesses now we just want to outrank him we actually did seo for them like in four months we quadrupled their traffic they're a big company they're like, like 10 million buck company uh, 50 employees etc and they fired us after four months even though we quadrupled their traffic, because for one out of the three main keywords, we still didn't outrank the brother, and that was that was too much. That was unacceptable. That was too much. So good riddance. So let me ask you this: so we've so we've um, we've went along with um, with all the with all the good stuff with your uh, process. Did you have anything along the way to where you're thinking like, you know what, maybe this isn't going to work out? Maybe uh, you know, things are looking a little bit bleak. I need to, I need to figure out how to kind of get around this problem that I'm having to where you thought maybe one day you're going to have to just shut it down and, 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 and go get a job or anything like that. Did you have yeah, anything yeah. that you had to actually overcome in the process? I thought I had a couple of those moments, like in the past five years, I think about two times, maybe three times I was actually like, maybe I should go look for a job and I could do this on the side, like to get a fixed like a thousand thousand euro per month, thousand five hundred euro per month job, just in order to get like you can also you cannot like buy an apartment, buy a house, like get a loan from the bank. Yeah. If you're a sole proprietor, right. it's really it's really um, hard to do. So that was one way of going about it. If we want to move out on our own, we need we need because I was like the only my my girlfriend is much younger than me, so she was still in school back then. So I was the guy. Um, who take care of the financials and those times came when I had like I don't know let's say seven or eight clients maybe ten clients I could pay the bills could pay the rent and anything but as with clients they come and go like I kept some of them for three years some of them go after th three months and we you have the ups you have to keep scaling the ups because my my problem back then was I still sort of have it when I like reach the top, I sort of, ah, oh, life is good. Let's work on them. But in SEO, it's a, it's a sales, it's, a, it's all about sales actually. Sure. You have to keep getting new clients, new clients. You have to keep scaling because they will drop off eventually. You get like five new clients, you think you hit the jackpot, but six months later, don't, like four out of those five clients will probably disappear. Like because the problem here is they don't understand the value you bring and that once you rank them like i rank a dentist for number one for everything and i rank them number one for everything like too soon i guess if that's even the case like in four months we rank them they're like thank you have a nice day I, I told them there must be a maintenance because you're just gonna drop off and it's much easier to maintain the rankings than to keep falling and going up and down 
and on those downsides when i could like barely just okay pay the rent i still had food i'm not i'm not going that sure uh, sure but like the critical times those are the times i thought about maybe we need something extra or something more stable on the side but the fear of the nine to five i've never worked a nine to five i was always like on my own my own boss so that was the the main thing that kicked my kicked me in the butt when i was feeling down so the client acquisition like client acquisition back then was the thing for me even now when i want to branch out to the uk us market uh, that's the thing so you're talking about branching out um is that is that your the next step in your process now to 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 scale up what it is that you're doing yeah now? as far as slovenia goes i'm just like for the past like the past 20 inquiries i got like 90 percent were referrals so i'm not troubled by going the ppc route funneling them in selling them pre-selling them etc i just i know the referrals are like a hundred times better they know they have to wait. They know what SEO is. They've heard good things about me from somebody who sure. I've done good work on. So those are the best clients. If they keep coming in, fine. But I know I'll have to like start at the bottom as far as the US goes. Yeah. I have to like get my name out there. Uh, but I got some pretty good connections like on this conference as well. I got a lot of people like, I'll help you out if you need a call, if you need this, if you need that, if you need... I'll jump on a plane to go somewhere. I was like, whoa, I never got this before. Like somebody would jump on a plane to uh, to grab a meeting for me. Okay, I'll, I'll pay for it as well if I, if, sure. you know, when we get the client, but that's awesome. Um, so how do you feel like, so you're here for the uh, Chiang Mai SEO conference. Yeah. Um, that's where a lot of the guys have come in this week. How do you think that connecting with other entrepreneurs gives you an advantage? I mean, obviously you traveled, I mean, I don't know, probably 24 hours to get here, probably. Like no, it was a two, like 13 hour flights. Okay. So it's not that bad, but still halfway around the world. Yeah, 13 hours is still a long time for uh, a uh, long an travel airplane. time. Oh. Right, right. Yeah, it's so usually 15 from the US just to get to China, and then I got like another 20 hours, it's 32 for me when I go. So how does, how does um, you know a conference like this? Do you go to other conferences? How does the networking, or is this new for you? This was the first business style conference I ever attended. Okay. Attended the first SEO conference I ever attended, uh, but I knew it was strictly for networking purposes. Maybe I, I knew I would get like a couple of nuggets from the conference itself. Right. But that's why I came here like a week early, like not only for the pre-events but to do networking because I'm friends with these people for like been for years on Facebook but I only see the profile pictures right, yeah. I said I, I want to see like faces that are, belong to these pictures so I was also surprised like I thought oh this is this must be a tiny Asian guy and this right. guy almost as tall as me comes up like buffed and I uh, oh it's you <laughs> it's always yeah. funny when you see their profile pictures you identify them as this there's this guy I thought was like yeah. had had sunglasses on forever and then when I meet him <laughs> it was like he was completely a different person that you think that's funny I had that happen at the YouTube conference I went to is uh every single but like literally I did not meet one person that did not say wow you're a lot taller in real life than I thought you would be because you know from the camera shot it's always you know right. that that straight shot so uh so I got that a lot it's funny yeah and then I thought, okay, maybe there'll be some networking events as well. But when I came here, it was like, boom. Even just when I landed in Bangkok, I met up with Matt Diggity and the British guys and everyone else. And they're like, I thought of them more as a celebrity type status. And I was like, whoa, I'm having dinner with these guys. And they were all just mellow, really down to earth, really cool guys. We went out partying and that it just kicked off from there. You know, I, 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 if you don't mind me jumping in here real quick, I want, I want to say that, that that seems to be a really common thing, just like, you know, across multiple different industries, is people have this assumption that with uh, successful people that they are completely out of reach, that they're not normal human beings, that they are, you know, like a celebrity type of yeah. status because they have a following or something like that. But at the end of the day, 
you know, like when, when you meet all of these people in person, it's just like, you know, they're people just like everybody else's. So don't be intimidated by people with followings. Don't be intimidated by people that are successful or that are, that are doing things. You would actually be shocked at how willing people are to, yeah. to, to help and, uh, you know, to help guide other people in their journeys as well. These aren't Kim Kardashian people. <laughs> right, right. I mean, they're just right. normal people just right. like you. Right, they you just know, figured out some stuff. Right. They're not showing right. up at a restaurant right. and they're like, hey, come in, <laughs> sit down right, right. here. Oh, here, let's clear this place out. You do SEO, right. yeah, all right, right. come right. on right. in. Right. Well, one of the funny things about being here in Chiang Mai is, is so I've known Matt Diggity for, I don't know, a year and a half. I met him after he sold a site or after he had sold a site and, I'm talking with him, and then he even appears on, on on the podcast. I still don't know. And then, like, so this conference in the last week, people are like, you know, I mean, it was a bigger. You, you could tell that he was like one of the bigger guys at the, you know, is what he does. Obviously, he's holding the conference, but I had no idea. You know what I mean? Like, there's no. Yeah. I mean, you don't know when you meet people or talk to people here, especially if that's not your field. Yeah. So I would say that for you guys out there listening, that. When you think there's somebody out there who may have some other things, reach out to them. Yeah. Send them a Facebook message. Yeah. You'll be shocked at who you can get in a message. Some of them may not respond, but I'll bet you it's more than 60, 70% of these people you know, will respond as long as you're not you know, a foolish person about yeah, it. Yeah, you have yeah. to be respectful of their, of their, their time, time as well. Everything. I saw that a lot, uh, like on the pre-events. People were like coming up to, yeah, I don't know you, but let's do like, to the to the to the ones that held the events, yeah. Uh, you don't know me, but let's get together. Uh, could you get together for lunch tomorrow? I would like to know uh, how you're doing, like everything. Right. Like, right. That's like weird. Yeah. Like, of course. Yeah. There's there's a, there's a standard approach that you should take, yeah. and that that approach typically starts with adding some type of value to that person. Yeah. Also. Yeah. What are you doing for them? Right. You know? Right. Yeah. And also, when you like, if you ask them like a short question or like there's a debate going on, you see them like Matt is answering questions. Just jump in right yeah that's like like some i i even i was even like surprised people came up to me oh you're you're the guy i was like yeah i'm the guy <laughs> you're the guy blah, blah, blah. Um, all right igor so uh, what is it that you spend your time on like so give me like just a quick breakdown of what your day looks like or a week looks like like how much do you work because i think a lot of people always think well you know, I'm going to go do this and I'm not going to work or I don't do anything. But obviously we work, have some choices in our time and things like that. So give us an idea what you do for a work basis. Yeah, I'm still a more or less a one man show. So everything client wise, communication with the client, acquiring new clients, talking to the clients is all on me. And all the technical stuff like link building, um, even publishing articles. I tried outsourcing that stuff, but in Slovenia it's hard because nobody knows, like hardly anyone knows SEO. Mm. I don't want to spend time teaching somebody, like doing SOPs for people. So I still do that manually as well because we're still not at that big of a scale. I don't want to scale up like the local ones. Like going to UK, US, I'll have VAs. I'll have VAs, SOPs in place, etc. This guy for content, this guy for lead generation, even for closing sales. Maybe I don't know how how I'm gonna go about that, but I uh, still do the all the nitty gritty stuff. So that takes a lot of time. At this at the scale I'm at now, um, it takes about like maybe four to six hours a day, like Monday to Friday. I try to keep the weekends a bit off. I still track everything, but four to six hours a day just for the clients. But then I like the rest the rest of the time, like maybe two to four hours, maybe sometimes more. I spend like researching, like network online networking, um, podcasts, videos, courses, etc. Because you have to be like, you have to be in the loop. If you if you miss out like for three months or maybe six months, <laughs> you don't know what's going on. People, sure. Yeah, I, I uh, back in 2013 I was doing, dude, <laughs> that's gone. You're on a that, different planet now. There you are on a different planet, yeah. So you have to keep up. So there's also that side. So that's also one of the reasons, because I don't want to do the nitty gritty. I feel like, why am I copying, pasting this stuff now for like for the past three hours? It's boring, it's right. senseless. I could, but still, like having the overhead or having the having somebody besides me doing that, or somebody out, I would just, I'm a bit, uh, like tentative to release the reins so 
I'm going to have to work on that. You yeah. release control. And that's one of the things yeah. for guys who do this is that once you release that control, you have to accept inferior yeah. work, yeah. basically. Cause I'm like, dealing with that right now. Right, you, I mean, yeah. th th you can think they're going to do it the way you want, and you can, but, but they just aren't you. And they're not going to do the same work you're doing. So you have to figure out, well, what is the acceptable level? You know, because we tend to want perfection because it's our place, it's our thing. But there's, there is a level in there where you can accept what they do, maybe not be as good as yours, but it's enough that you can get by with it and, 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 and it will work. And you don't have to spend that time and those hours like, you know, doing it yourself. Yeah, especially with clients. You, I, I, if I was doing it like on my own affiliate sites, like, okay, we're not ranking or we're not, we're not rising fast right. enough. Okay, right. we'll, we'll do something else. I'll, right. I'll, maybe I'll, I'll tweak it myself. But with clients, if you mess up really bad, right, they're and they, they're tanking, and if I have like some guarantees, I used to do guarantees. Nowadays, nobody wants them anymore. So, okay, let's not go that route. But you have to like return the money if you don't deliver. Right. So that's that's also one of the reasons. But I can still I'm still not capped at like eight hours a day. But I don't feel I have to work eight hours a day. True. That's why I went the solo route. So you can structure it however you yeah, feel like. Yeah, I can like work two hours, take the dog out for a walk for right. two hours, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, as I said, the nine to five, like sitting down for just eight hours, like a six hour Terrifying. flight kills me. Yeah. So well, it's because you come completely unproductive after three hours. Yeah. Like if you just sit there and don't do anything, I would say this, if you're working and you're working eight, 10 hours at a time, like your productivity level just starts going crazy down. Like you sitting there, you've experienced that when you're in front of the computer and you can't get on anything and then you go check your Facebook is because you've lost that focus. Our brains aren't able to focus yeah. for 10 hours straight in yeah. a row. So you, you know, it's better to go take a break, go out and take the dog for a walk and then come back and go back to work than it is just a, you know, grind, grind, grind. Another thing I found that um, that's helped me also is I have a standing desk and I have a sitting desk. Yes. So Maybe. basically like I'll have, you know, cause everything's networked together. So basically I'll sit down, you know, at the, I call it my streaming station. I'll sit right. there and I'll, I'll work for a while and then I'll get up and then go over to the standing area and, you know, work over there for a while and then go grab a coffee, sit down on the balcony, go back down to the sitting desk again, come back to the standing right. desk again and so on. So. Every online entrepreneur has digital tools that contribute to their success. What's in your digital toolbox? So Igor, one of the things that we try to do uh, in every show, it's kind of our little special segment that we do. Um, and what we'd like you to share with us is, um, we all have things as entrepreneurs that we use in our businesses. And so it might be organizational software tools, Chrome apps, uh, podcasts or blogs that you read or software tools that you use in your business or crucial apps or in your crucial phone apps. that you use yeah, I, mean, this, I mean what we call it is the digital toolbox and so what's inside your digital toolbox i don't have many tools i've had many over the years i tried a lot of apps but like in the seo stuff changes like uh, we used to have a tool for uh, checking keyword density checking keyword prominence or whatever it was called like but if it doesn't work anymore, we don't use it. Right. But the one constant that's been with me for like years and years, which with each is H Hrefs. H H Hrefs, A Hrefs. Yeah. I don't know how yeah. to A H A uh, uh, R E F. Yeah. Yeah. H Hrefs. Like Tim Solo. Oh, so yesterday. we saw yesterday. I yeah, guess. yeah. Okay. So that, that guy. There. That's the. I used to use Majestic, but H Hrefs is like H way. H Hrefs. A H Hrefs. <laughs> I saw, I was at that presentation yesterday. Still, the, the, the SEO guys are just not what I think. just flying over my head like. Yeah, that's the, that's the go-to tool. You can do so much with that tool, like competition analysis, keyword research. And, and as I remember listening yesterday, he's got this whole other thing that he's doing, like there's a third section coming out that does something completely new. Yeah, I, I, I don't. Everyone seemed to be like, oh. oh, oh. Yeah. That's gonna happen, but we'll see when it comes out. It's a monthly subscription, so that's a, that's, if I would have to pick one thing to have in an SEO toolbox, it would be that. Right. I also have some local things that are not like applicable to just the Slovenians where I buy my uh, my PBNs, right. because I can like buy them for like ten euros. Right. And but people playing here, like in the U.S., for the for the same power, you would pay like two hundred, three hundred bucks for it. Mm. So that's one advantage I have. Not sharing that one. <laughs> <laughs> mm. But um, what do you use for organizational type things? Organizational type things. I'm 
I'm pretty old school. I have pen and paper as well. I have like stuff on my uh, above uh, on the wall, uh, but otherwise Zoho. I don't use Google Docs, Google Sheets, anything. Google. I'm a bit paranoid about that, but not too paranoid. I still like mm, when I talk to my content writers. I still use Gmail, so I'm not that paranoid. But like having PBNs and ah, oh, this is linking with this anchor to this at this exact date to this page. I'm not putting that on uh, um, Google Docs, so I use Zoho, zoho zoho.com. What about uh, podcasts, blogs you read, anything like that? I've been reading, like, since 2007, I've been reading Tim Ferriss' blog. This is not, like, internet marketing stuff, but still... Yeah, those are kind of things that we we, we love to hear about, because those are the things that maybe someone's not getting into SEO, but, you know, looking for good business inspiration. he, He changes directions as well, but he's... Just check it out. Tim Ferriss for our Workweek blog. I don't know, TimFerris.com, something like that. And uh, as far as SEO stuff, like, okay, I I check the big ones like Search Engine Journal, etc. I also check up Moz a couple of times, right. but they're really, really white hat-ish. I'm more of a gray hat myself. Um, but then I mostly like mingle on Facebook. Like yeah, on, so what, what guys are you? I mean, obviously, you, you talked about Matt Diggity. And he's Matt Diggity, show, yeah. But like, who are some of the other guys that, if you're into Tristan in the SEO game, like who they could kind of look out and maybe give them some inspiration? Or people you know that have courses that you would think are good because you've interacted with them? I don't know about courses, but the Lion Zeal Mastermind, I would like to give a like, shout out to them. They're like 50. Daryl Rosser, he was a speaker yesterday. Right, I remember. I follow that. his stuff. Um, he has a, like, a, also, like a. I think the biggest SEO podcast, like he's 52 or 53 oh, right. episodes deep with that. He gets on like every couple of weeks, he gets people making six figures, etc. on there. They talk about different like client acquisition, affiliate, um, niching down, whatever. And his uh, group, like Lions Hill Mastermind, has like 15,000 people in it. And it's really active. It's a really active group. Like you ask one question, the debate is going to, if you're not like, spamming right uh there's gonna be a good debate every time and you meet people there and you interact it's like one of the best the best um seo groups i'm involved in any uh inspirational kind of things that you use uh, you know when you're having a bad day or anything you go to is there a go-to thing you might go to for that like online wise or it could be a book. I mean, like, listen, uh, a book you read. I mean, if you, you mentioned know, you were old school, you got any right. paperbacks that you like to dig into? I do have sort of like a ritual when I write down like my goals every morning and I read them like every night before I go to bed, like goals, like personal goals, business goals, etc. And that sort of keeps me. I, I, I don't have many bad days. And also my girlfriend is very supportive. And my dog, since I work from home, is constantly by my side. So also supportive. Yeah. 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 She could talk. She could. She she knows SEO. <laughs> she knows SEO. <laughs> but any other morning rituals you might have that kind of set up your day? Um, just a big cup of coffee. That that's, that's what right. gets me yeah, started. That's the, that's the and walking the dog. Right and there. walking the dog. That that that, that <laughs> that's a must for me in the morning, just to get out, get some fresh air. Because sitting at the computer all the time. I also had to do like yoga. I've been doing yoga since February. Those are tools. That's yeah. Nice. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. At first I was like, that's for chicks. <laughs> and then I was like really mellow and like it helped me a lot because I'm tall. I'm not used to sitting down. I'm just right. like collapsing into myself. My girlfriend keeps poking me in the back. Come on, posture, posture. If one should see this, she'll probably go like posture. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that helps a lot. Yeah, I, I would recommend yoga to anyone. All right. There you go. So, if if anybody listening wants to find out more about you, your your company, they wanna they wanna work with you. How do they get in touch with you? The best way is to just hit me up on Facebook. Just add me as a friend or PM. Uh, that's the most that's the most usual way I get around. Okay. What is it? Just the last thing before we go is what is it you think you'll define yourself as successful at some point? Because one of the things that people don't acknowledge is the successes along the way so do you feel like you're successful now or what is it you're going to define as success when you get there obviously you'll continue to climb that mountain but like do you feel successful at this point i do feel successful because i'm living on my own terms Ah. i don't have a boss i'm making like from for where i where i live i'm making decent money so i don't have that problem as long as i can have the lifestyle I'm having now, 
I'm fine. If I upgrade it, great. fine. Okay, if I could buy a house, great. But if I'm still living in the apartment I am now, fine by that. So success in my, in my terms is just like the freedom. The freedom that the lifestyle I'm living now gives me and the businesses I'm in, that's it. Like the nine to five would, I know would destroy me like literally destroy yeah. me. I, I would be miserable no matter what the other factors in my life were like. So there's a guy out there right now and he's listening or a gal and they're sitting here right now and maybe his life's being destroyed by having to go to his nine to five yeah. job and he's trying to figure out how to do this. What's your advice for that guy right now? Either, first of all, in order to get into this and to get results in a in normal time, like not spread out in a couple of years because nobody is going to work for free for years. Find a mentor, find somebody, join the groups, join the groups, uh, like maybe start off with some simple courses, some cheap ones. You need a bit of money, like you don't need thousands of bucks, but you need a couple of hundred bucks, maybe like for tools, maybe a hundred bucks set out each month for tools and just start testing it out. Just like following, maybe get a course, whatever course, and just follow it, follow it to the T. The guy who made the course probably had success with it, even if it's failing it, like, even if it's on the downside at the moment, it still works. Right. So you, you like learn the ropes. Oh, is it SEO, is it PPC, is it affiliate, whatever. Or if you're, pa if you're really passionate about something, 10 bucks, buy a domain, right. get a blog. Get a blog going, just write. Write like every three days, write something about your passion. And, you'll, and when you see the traffic coming in, when you see, Somebody that's not me in the it's analytics it. It was like, wow, somebody from Brazil and he spent two minutes on my site. Actually, somebody actually read something or somebody put a like on my post. The world's going to open up and then it's yeah. just going to ramp up. Yeah, that validation is is it means a lot. Like yeah. when, you, when you know when you're working on something like that and you start getting those likes coming in, you start yeah. getting those views and all that stuff. It really uh, it really means a lot. It, it's like a it's like a like a drug almost. You know what I mean? You're like, oh, yeah, how can I make this even bigger? Yeah. That's great. Of course. Well, very good. Uh, you've been listening to the Digital Journey Podcast, navigating you through your online business voyage. We'll see you next week. If you've not listened to our previous podcast, you can check them out at our website at digitaljourneypodcast.com. So there's directions if, you, if you're listening on YouTube and you'd like to get it uh, in your iTunes or Stitcher or whatever. There's lots of ways to listen. We encourage you to give us some feedback. Um, so make sure that wherever you're listening to this, that you leave us a review and that you send us a message. Um, and if you have a great story that you want to share, you can reach out to Rob at gorillasonline.com at the top of the page or me at nicknimmon.com. And if you're interested in searching for an online business or selling your business, make sure that you check out empireflippers.com. Each week, I get an email, and I actually got one today, actually, an email from Justin, who's one of the partners over at Empire Flippers, um, and there's usually six to 10 businesses for sale every single week. Opportunity is waiting for you at empireflippers.com, so make sure that you head over there and check them out. Igor, thanks again for coming in and sharing your inspiring story. I'm sure it's gonna inspire some of our listeners this week. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for having me. You're welcome. We hope that you've enjoyed this podcast and it has inspired you and uh, we wish you a ton of luck. And before we go, um, I want to share some wise words from some other entrepreneurs. And this comes from James Rockefeller, J.D. Rockefeller. Don't be afraid to give up the good to go for what's great. Mm, nice. I'll leave you with a little bit of uh, knowledge bump before you go. Hey, thanks guys for listening and we'll see you next time. You're listening to the Digital Journey Podcast. The Digital Journey is brought to you by Empire Flippers, the largest marketplace for selling and purchasing online businesses. EmpireFlippers.com.